I think most people realize it takes a lot of persistence and perseverance to build a custom home with a lot of architectural detail. Well, how would you like to build a historically accurate World War II glider? You might recall that's exactly the project we came across okay. at the factory where the trusses for this house were built. The current owner, Nick Landsmeyer, has donated the floor space for the assembly of a full-scale CG 4A glider with steel, plywood, and canvas. When they came to me several years ago and said, we want to build a glider, I said, why don't we build a quarter-inch scale model because it's so big. They had been going about it for quite a while by then, so they had a lot of the framework done for the fuselage, cockpit, and wings. But with more than 70,000 parts involved, they still had a lot of work ahead. Well, we've spent the last several years finishing the fuselage, so it's pretty well done. And that's been a tremendous amount of project with all the little details. And now, well, this summer, the boys are working on the wing, which is 34 feet long. Now, thousands of them were built in World War II, and the reason Nick got interested was because the wood parts for the gliders were made in the very same factory. The finished gliders were sent out in crates, reassembled overseas, and then used to move men and machinery up to the front lines. Here's the gliders being pushed down. This would be after D-Day. This might be going into Holland, and they're loading them up in Europe. Here, are, this is in Europe. You can see, actually, there's a missing wing there. I guess they got an extra wing. Uh, this would be England. Those are some horses, but just the whole combat situation. Some more gliders. There's just, you know, 14,000 gliders. Nearly all of them were left to rot where they landed, so just a handful of them remain today in museums, along with a few parts scattered around the country. Uh, Ingemar and uh, Jim were the ones who were hunting down parts that we could get started with. This, all these um, metal parts are a uh, product of their digging around in various places around the, the country. Some of those same parts have been incorporated into the glider, but mostly they're building new parts from blueprints that they were able to track down from an early one. It's been awfully fun seeing it uh, take shape because we started with virtually nothing. You know, there wasn't a single stick or pieces of metal here were all cut apart. To see that all start to take shape and at one point it actually start to look like an airplane, a lot of fun. Now it's been just about a couple years since our initial visit and they moved into a new building at the factory and they made some pretty good progress. It's coming along real good. Okay. I think another year or we'll be done with it. You see we're working on the the uh, right wing here, we still have a left wing to build. Now, part of it's built, but we have the whole wing tip, so that's easily going to take us another year. And then we're going to have to find a place to assemble the whole thing. The other thing that's happening is um, there's, they're putting what's called the skin on. So after that, the wing, that is done, they'll be putting that on, they'll be painting that. Then we'll have a, a glider that's pretty much ready to, to, to display. The beauty of it is, is we've gotten six volunteers that are worth their weight in gold and uh, it has speeded the project up by five years. Well I, I'm interested in airplanes, I always have been, uh, so it's an airplane number one. <laughs> Woodwork, uh, I always work with wood so that's also another uh, enjoyable thing uh, and be able to put this together to uh, make it a uh, part of the history of Minnesota, which uh, I think is important. Now, we're not the only ones who have taken note of the glider project. It's been covered in the local news, as well as the Air and Space magazine put up by the Smithsonian Institute. So there's a lot of people interested in how this all turns out. You always have little surprises when you're doing something like this. So we're in a surprise mode right now and, and uh, doing things that we didn't expect to have to do. So, uh, but we're, we're making progress.